Hit Squad. The squad are out in force today. It's barely noon and already I've seen three out of five. A brown envelope for a crimson puddle beneath the ever-inviting sky. Cotton wool the shape of camels swimming through a penthouse pool. I don't recall which one I paid. Night black as fetish leather, stars refusing to watch. This quintet of strangers stalking anonymous streets, piercing the monotony of predictable routine. Each role entirely inverted with the imminent threat of eternal silence. Mortality sold to a flashy moment which lines the pavements with a devious frill. Which one will it be? And when? But now, the days feel much lighter and the clock ticks much louder. A brown envelope for a crimson puddle beneath the ever-inviting sky. My name is Matt Abbott. Welcome to this month's, uh, this week's Insta session. Um, I'm very excited to be hosting Antonia J. King tonight. Um, as you probably know, we've been doing these Insta sessions pretty much every week since the start of May. Uh, we've been doing an event on some kind of platform every week since lockdown. Um, I've loved it. It's been one of my crutches and it's been great to hear that other people feel the same as well. Um, and yeah, tonight we've got Antonia J. King. Um, I've been asking Antonia for months and months and because of work and stuff she's not been able to do it and one of the few silver linings of lockdown 2 is that Antonia has been furloughed so she's able to join us tonight so I'm really really happy. Um, Antonia is one of the hosts of uh, London based poetry night Boomerang, um, a previous Hammer and Tongue spoken word finalist. Uh, she's featured at many events across London, has performed at Love Supreme Festival and Rally and, Cla and, and Rally and Cry at Battersea Arts Centre. She's currently a Barbican Young Poet and her debut chapbook, She Too Is A Sailor, is published by the absolute legends that are Bad Betty Press. So, I am going to invite Antonia to join. It works. Why do I say that every week? It always works. I don't know why I say that. Da -da 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 -da. Change right there. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm very good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, lockdown two is kind of good for me because um, I'm a part-time PhD student, but I also work in retail, so it's nice to be able to, like, keep myself a bit safer. Yeah. Um, yeah, because customers are, like, wild with not wanting to wear masks. Uh, I can't imagine how frustrating that must be for you, just yeah. trying to do your job, like... <laughs> yeah um so yeah i've just been at home although there's now no uh excuses when my partner asked me to go for a run so <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I'm, like, I'm tired from work like i've been in bed all day what excuse do i have none look a P phd's tiring like you know <laughs> yeah ex yeah oh yeah exactly but um how have you been um I've just been carrying on working to be honest I wasn't I didn't mm -hmm. qualify for any self-employment support or any furlough money or anything so I've just so I plowed on but I've been very lucky no, that I've been able to earn money so I'm none at all though. sorry you didn't qualify for any no no because I'm a it's complicated but I'm a sole director of a limited company so I'd have to furlough myself and uh I won't yeah it just wasn't worth it but I'm lucky because yeah. I've been able to earn money um yeah. yeah, I saw the advert, loved it. Oh, cheers. That was recorded there. No high tech on this phone. No high tech shit there. Um, it made me so happy. Oh, thank you. So yeah, I I was going to say I met you uh, doing the poetry takeaway oof, just over three years ago now. Yeah. In, in Barking, which is mad. Yes, um, I actually still love Barking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barking's <laughs> cool, like... Um, yeah. Yes, I met you doing poetry takeaway. That's how I sort of came across your work. Yeah, um, so you yeah. could do the session tonight. What was that? Oh yeah, honestly, like it's been so good because um, there's been a lot of like online stuff that I really wanted to get involved at, but like since lockdown one ended, I've been back at work full time. Yeah. So like trying to catch little Instagram things on my break and stuff, but um, yeah, this breather was needed for me, so it's been really yeah. nice to kind of catch up with everyone via zoom <laughs> yeah cool cool um so your debut chat book um yeah. she too is a sailor published by bad betty uh, when did that come out i forgot to the release date i want to say bad betty have actually joined so if they want to type this they <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, but I want to say like June last year. Cool. So in like normal times. Yes, it was normal times. It was <laughs> yeah. There was a there was an in person book launch and everything. Wild wow. concept. I know. What even is that? Yeah, I was just saying, like, if you're doing a PhD and you work in a job, I guess it might be difficult for you to find time to work on new poetry material. Like, how do you find balancing, like, spinning the plates and stuff? Yeah, it's a lot. Um, and funny you should ask that, because I've just applied for some, like, writing retreats that I guess are going to kick back up when when everything is um, back to normal. And literally my cover letter was just, I don't have time to write creatively. <laughs> Please give me this time. Um, and yeah like my creative reading is is kind of like being put on the back burner as well but um I was actually like this is something I'm working for at the moment I think I'm gonna like schedule in creative time I think it's got to a point where I need to actually like become one of those bullet journey bullet, like the bullet journal people where I'm actually like okay this is you know I'm not allowed to read an academic book on a Sunday or something so because <laughs> even like as as writers and you know po poets who gig and publish that like it's so mm -hmm. difficult to find the time to let yourself read or let yourself write and it should always be the most important thing that you do in fact it is the most important thing that you do but you can never prioritize it can you never never and also like the time for inspiration as well I feel like the time to actually allow yourself to get inspired as well particularly like I don't get all of the pressure about you know kind of upping your creative output or writing you know your first novel during lockdown because I'm like I'm in my room like I really don't know what I'm supposed to be inspired by right now I know there has been a lot of that, aren't there? Like, oh, write a novel, learn a language, whatever. And it's like, I'm just, one, I'm just trying to survive. And two, I don't know what the fuck's happening. Like, I can't just wistfully start typing up. <laughs> it's mad, isn't it? I feel, like, I feel like anything I wrote over the last, like, maybe eight months would just be so dark. And, like, confined. Yeah. Like, I don't know if anyone ever needs to read like that. No. Um, yeah. yeah. 2021 it's going to be all like dystopian novels and like dystopian novels and covid based edinburgh fringe shows with terrible puns in the title oh, i hadn't even thought about what the fringe is going to be like i mean if it happens but when it does it'll all be you know covid stuff or it i yeah. might have to give the first one a miss you know because that's going to be a lot i hadn't even lockdown improv <laughs> <laughs> yeah all of the improv comedies everyone's just gonna shout out covid isn't it it's gonna be yeah. might actually be too much <laughs> i reckon so so do you fancy sharing as a poem oh yeah i can do um cool. yeah i guess this one it's from my chat book and it's about uh the pressure of christmas um and i guess like it's an ode to everyone who has uh, a complicated relationship with christmas um so it's called the carol for those dreading christmas you go downstairs for breakfast forgetting to take your bonnet off your aunt's question what is that will start a war you walk around your own family dodging grenades your cousin's laughter doesn't sound like home you question why you are not laughing with them why a battle cry leaps out of their mouth in place of laughter you walk Inhale the country, because in that house, air that fills their lungs easily doesn't reach yours. Maybe they were given gas masks for protection. Your other aunt will brag that her eyes are slightly more blue than the rest of theirs. The blue eyes see better, our blue eyes their weapon. Your uncle apologises for the last time you were all together. Says he doesn't usually use that word, it was the alcohol. You wonder if your mother has ever used that word how much alcohol it would take for her to use it now, you turn your side of the sofa into a trench. Question where they have drawn their battle lines. You go to bed at 9pm. Say you have a headache and you are not lying, you dream of what a peace treaty would look like, they don't even know they started a war. You remember the soldiers who stopped fighting to play football at Christmas, knowing they were going to kill each other at breakfast. Oh, that was good. That was so good. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Thank you. It's okay. one like 
you know when you look back on a poem and you're like wow i had a lot of emotions yeah god that's <laughs> just... and i'm like oh i was mad yeah because i guess now so if, if say let's say your chat book did come out last june so that's like mm -hmm. a year and a quarter i guess you must now have a different relationship with those poems and sort of <laughs> revisiting them now it's sort of almost rediscovering them in a way yeah 100 percent. and i feel like i was a i was a really different person as well um in a very different stage of my life like it's wild what a year can do particularly when that year is 2020 because yeah yeah, yeah it's really weird do you get that when you're looking back over old poems like uh most of the time i cringe and delete them from wherever they're publicly available but yeah it, it is interesting sometimes you can look over an old notebook and you f it's almost like you completely forget that you've written it and it's almost like you're reading a different person it is mad 100 percent is really wild yeah i kind of like it yeah it's cool it is cool it's interesting I and mean, if and if, if you read a poem from five years ago and it feels exactly the same as what you write in now then you need to read more i suppose um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um yeah definitely and like with she too is a sailor i feel like i kind of recognize this girl but some of my early stuff like when i first came onto the scene i came onto the scene from very uh, like a spoken word kind of um spoken word kind of place and the poems i'm writing now are just like very very different and so i really like looking back over them because i feel like while some of my writing has developed, like maybe that initial like fire and, you know, being less concerned with certain aspects of poetry and more in others, like my priorities were just really different. And I kind of like where my priorities were back then a bit as well. So yeah. Thing. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's like creative death in it. Like they call it like, you like, oh, no, I can't write it like that anymore. But actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, yeah exactly and i feel like whilst i i love like writing more for the page i guess um i definitely like miss some of like the ways i just like be scrambling to try and like get my viewpoint across the best way when most people were gonna like connect with it just on the bus on the way to a gig yeah absolutely so i, I was because i was gonna say so you you co-host boomerang and yeah. you got the hammer and tongue final so obviously you've got strong roots in the, the spoken word scene and yeah I love it. It, and are you currently one of the Barbican Young Poets? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. No. Our um, yeah, our cohort has just has just ended. Oh, it kind of ended abruptly. Like one day we just said goodbye after a session, and then by the next session it was like, yeah, no. Right. Um, oh, oh, okay. Fair enough. Well, yeah. has that has that been part of your transition to think more page G, or is it was it seeing it published by a bad Betty, or is it just a natural stage in your life slash career? it's interesting because i think i mean i love poetry and i think i very much saw like devices that you'd use on a page as something that i kind of felt was quite far away from what i was doing and actually it was when um bad betty press so in particularly jake wild hall was like maybe if you thought about like utilizing these tools a bit more um it would be really interesting and so yeah it was kind of with bad betty and we just kind of meet in costa and he'd be like have you heard of this form and i'd be like no that's wild <laughs> why they call him jake wild hall he's yeah. just one of the, he's amazing so <laughs> yeah, yeah no, he's actually yeah they're just both of them legends and then um i feel like you can't get edited by amy aiko and not not dramatically improve as a poet as well so like it just it, it happens just by osmosis yeah i've heard, <laughs> I've heard that a lot um great well do you fancy sharing another poem sorry i'm conscious so i'm i'm chatting a lot no it's fine i'm really enjoying just like having a conversation with a human as well <laughs> it's really nice. yeah. Um, yeah we'll go with conversations with my mother about love this one's kind of the title poem conversations with my mother about love my mum asks me why I politicise love. I tell her that love without politics feels fragile. I am always fearful of uncharted water. Maybe this fear is because my father is a sailor. Maybe this fear is because my mum wears her pain like a piece of clothing she does not wish to remove. 
I tell mum I have learned not to use another human being as an anchor. Maybe I learned this because my father is a sailor, but a terrible anchor. I have never been good at staying grounded. And so maybe I am looking for an ocean, although I saw my mother drown in an ocean with the sailor. And I am as small as mum, so maybe I need a river. I tell her that calm waters and calm love makes me nervous. Perhaps these nerves are because my father is a sailor who taught me that when you are not fighting a storm, you should check the horizon and keep your sails up. Maybe these nerves are because my mom has been battling these storms and I have never seen my father fight one. I tell her that she wears her pain like a piece of clothing she does not wish to remove. She tells me that's because I have a habit of stealing her clothes and she doesn't want me to wear this one. My mom told me men are sailors. She said, you will only ever be a boat to them. Use me as your anchor, I tell her. She looks too fragile to be an anchor. She smiles and reminds me that she too is a sailor. Wow, beautiful. I saw just, yeah, that's really, really beautiful. I love that. Thank you. It's interesting how many of like these poems are kind of about men. And I really just don't write about men anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I can't just... Yeah. Right. They've had their time. I think move on now. There's more interesting <laughs> things in the world. <laughs> Literally, it's just really amusing to me. I'm like, wow, they really, they really took up a lot of space in my life. <laughs> yeah. True, true to real life, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, no, that was that was beautiful, and I just the imagery and the fast pace of it and just yeah no it's fantastic i really love that um do you want to uh, do you want to share another one and then i'll ask you another question I, i'd sort of let it flow naturally but i'm just conscious of time that's all i've talked i've spoken a lot so that's all right yeah. the way me, the way you. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine let's go with yeah so uh this one is about dr maya angelou the icon the legend um it's called Maya and her protest are going furniture shopping. They have taught themselves how to sleep. They are collecting nice furniture and soft bed sheets because her body likes them, giving soft melodies to audiences who ask for volume and power. Maya and her protest left a man because he didn't make them sing. They do not worry about perfect grammar. Maya and her protest do not smile for photographs unless they are happy. They are in a head wrap and hoop earrings. When Malcolm died, they went to Harlem to be a fire extinguisher to a burning town. Maya and her protest know to allow themselves soft bed linen. They know how to march, how to leave men, how to save men. And they are in a head wrap and hoop earrings, looking side on into a camera as if to say, I know you won't capture me perfectly, so I am going to sleep now. Wow. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. That's just, uh, even just the re repetition of Maya and her protest, that's just so, yeah, this is exactly what I need. I'm so lucky to do these sessions. Like <laughs> These sessions are dope. I've been, I've been um, watching them on like various accounts um, throughout, like, throughout lockdown, and they've just been, honestly, they have been uh, a real joy. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you so much for being a part of it. Like, uh, that, just hearing these poems, it, it's weird, isn't it, doing an Insta gig? Because obviously it's not the same as reading it to a room full of people, but, like, there's something strangely, I don't want to say intimate, but, like, you reading it to one other person, it is a, I like a special it. type of performance. Do you know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And I feel like... I hope that some aspect of like how a lot of the poetry scene has moved online kind of continues past lockdown as well for like many reasons accessibility reasons time yeah. reasons like it's 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 I mean we're creative so it doesn't surprise me but it's been like amazing to see like how how creative people have been and how how we've kind of kept that community and it's just moved totally yeah, it seems like the poetry world has survived more than a lot. Like, I feel really sorry for musicians because you can't no, really do music gig. Yeah. yeah, a lot of my friends are, who are musicians are kind of uh, managing to kind of teach online, which is good. Yeah. So, but other than that, 
it's yeah it's really tough i mean for creatives in general 2020 has been specifically <laughs> But we're here. Yep. We so move, as they say. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. And hope, I was supposed to do Boomerang in August, so I'm a little bit gutted that I've missed out. But we'll uh, hopefully we'll get a chance one day. Of course. Yeah. I'm, I can't, honestly, the first Boomerang, I think I'm just going to be like crying into a glass of wine. <laughs> Sounds good. In some um, ball gown. So it's just... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, it's just after <laughs> Tento, so if you've got any poems that you definitely want to share, um... yeah, we'll go. We'll go. Um, this but one, no, is... no, you're fine. We'll go. Uh, this one, I I like this one because I'm a Leo and it's named Antonio Jade King. So, <laughs> um, Antonio Jade King. In my mum's mouth, it means I named you, so men do not need to. In his mouth, my name sounds like my mum's mistakes. It sounds like I will name you with my hands. It sounds like I will name you Ant. Ant like small brown thing. Ant like something you don't want. Occasionally, I still hear him filling my name with ants. Mum didn't name me before I was born. Unable to know me before she heard me cry, he felt the same. She gave me her surname and not a man's. Thought that if they followed my name, maybe they would follow me too. But my name is not protection for men or their hands. It can't be. It's just a name. But I want a new name. One that only my mother knows. Because this one now sounds like ant. Ant like small brown thing. Ant like do you know how much she can hold on her back? I will give this new name only to my mother. It will not fall into the mouths of men who still think me in need of naming. Beautiful. I have to credit that one to Rachel Long. She, she, she. I was doing a workshop with her as part of Apples and Snakes Writing Room, um, which is an awesome program as well. I think they had applications open. I'm not sure if they've just closed, but if they're still open, go for it. Yeah. Um, and she was like, write a poem about your name, and I was like, um, but yeah, I ended up getting one of the poems from my chapbook out of it. So. Yeah, I'm Rachel Long. What a what a incredible poet! Like, and a beautiful person as well, obviously. But yeah, <laughs> she's great, isn't she? Love her. Yeah, I just fangirl over Rachel Long a lot. Like any time, any time she'd walk into a Barbican Young poet session, I'd just be like, it's Rachel Long. <laughs> so bad. Yeah, I must say, like, because uh, the reason I've met you and and Rachel Long and many others is through the poetry takeaway, and like. We're so lucky that Michael, I mean, I know it's not just yeah. down to Michael, but we're so lucky that that community exists, aren't we? Just for, you I, know. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the, he's one of the most consistent people at like getting poets paid, getting poets networking, getting poets, like writing poetry. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's really amazing. But as a writer as well, so for anyone who's watching who doesn't know what it is, basically the poetry takeaway, we pitch up at festivals and we write poetry on demand for members of the public. They give us ingredients and we turn them into poems. And sometimes you've got to do it really quick. And it, it really changes you as a writer as well, doesn't it? Really does. And I, I love it because it, it kind of connects me back to the poet I used to be. I was just like fast writing, getting stuff out there, just kind of wanted to get like my thoughts and feelings on the paper as quick as I can. And I was less bothered about how they came out. And I love Poetry Takeaway because it gives you that space to just be like, creative in like the purest form of the word yeah um, and you're often writing for kids as well and they just love it <laughs> yeah, yeah it is it is banging it's really really cool um, um cool so it's five to uh have you got any i reckon you could squeeze one or two more if you want to if you don't want to that's fine we can just chat but i thought i'd we'll, give you an opportunity we'll squeeze one more in yeah because I have to, I have to, any any time I speak in any kind of way publicly, I have to talk about the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Because... Uh, yeah, didn't you do and, a, like, an essay on it, or...? Yeah, it's kind of what my PhD is on. <laughs> kind of. Like, I'm, I'm looking into um, the political significance of black sitcoms in the 90s. So... Um, yeah, and it was a big part of my master's thesis as well. How I've managed to get a university to allow me to do a PhD on the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, I don't know. Sounds but good I'm to me. Going... <laughs> yeah, 
I'm just going with it until like they realize what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, so this one is called 10. I'm 10. I'm watching Will Smith locked in a basement with his girlfriend. She takes a wig off because there's a literal earthquake. He calls this wig deception and we laugh. He sings that his girl is getting on his nerves. So she throws her fake nails in his face. We laugh. He sings that, she th that he thought she was fine. He calls her a liar we laugh he sings that he doesn't know if her body is hers so now i'm 10 questioning what men will allow me to do to my own face when i'm older nice fantastic thank you Brilliant. i like turning, i like turning to popular culture when i can yeah uh, yeah, yeah which I'm is kind of surprising yeah, especially looking back on stuff in the 90s and sort of understanding the social uh, and political and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot and there's a lot that, like, think there's a lot that particularly sitcoms think they can get away with because they're funny. And it's like, okay, we're laughing, but what's the actual joke here? So yeah. Isn't there something like, there's loads of clips of Ross from Friends and if you take away the laugh track, it's really sinister. Ross? Ross from Friends is... He's a yeah. whole problem. <laughs> he's, not, like, he's actually so manipulative. And in the end episode, everyone's all happy that she's got off the plane. And I really wish she just stayed on the plane, lived her best life in Paris. Why she came back to him, we will never know. I don't know. But yeah, no, it's, it is interesting to look at that. So yeah, well, hopefully you'll publish publish it when you're finished. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. I'm looking at like trying to trying to get like little snippets of um, my research kind of out there for anyone who's interested. Because I dislike this thing that academia does where it kind of keeps, it's very insular. Um, yeah. It's very like academics writing for academics and it's very like job. <laughs> It is this very like some elements of not all <laughs> not hashtag not all poetry, but it's very like bubble. <laughs> um, so I'm keen to like if people are interested, get it out there because I didn't I didn't sign up to do a PhD just so like men in tweed could be like oh good research like it's not. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds a bit like poetry. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, no um, offence to anyone who wears tweed, unless, you no. know. The only person who can get away with wearing tweed is Giles from Buffy, in my eyes. Yes! Yes. Just to give another 90s reference, although it's not a sitcom, obviously, but... No, um, but yeah, 100%. I'm with cool. you. Cool. Well, look, thank you so much for giving up your time. I really, really appreciate it. It's been so wonderful to have you on. Um... Well, thank you so much. This has been great. I'm really glad I could finally come and do this because yeah. you're doing an amazing job as well. Honestly, thank you for like creating this space. And... No, well, it's my pleasure. It really is. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, so, well, hopefully I'll see you at Big Morang or on the takeaway or something. Yes. And, um, yeah. So, yeah. Until then. Have a lovely rest of your evening, all right? Take care. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Uh, that was the wonderful Antonia Jade King. Check out her chat book, She Too Is a Sailor on Bad Betty Press. Next week, uh, Hannah Hodgson is our guest poet. Louise Fazakali is hosting, so please join us same time, half seven till eight UK time. My name's Matt Abbott. My name's Hulk. Cheers. <laughs>